Before that, though, good news, everyone. It's official. British summertime has begun. Yes, the clocks went forward yesterday, but are we missing that lost hour, Leslie? <laughs> Oh, well, yes, actually, in a word, I'm absolutely shattered today by just my own fault. I did have a rather good time on Saturday night. I was up in uh, Derbyshire near Matlock, uh, where I was celebrating Victoria Fern's 21st birthday. Happy birthday again, my darling. Uh, and it was quite a blast. She? Well, she's just this lovely, lovely girl. And her mum, uh, Debs, who's a brilliant, brilliant woman, owns this kind of stately home. I mean, she's a real rags to riches story. And uh, she wanted to give her girl the best 21st first birthday ever so she invited me to come along and sing a bit i was due to sing at like quarter to ten i didn't get on till half past one in the morning <laughs> the whole thing didn't finish till four and then of course they they put the clocks forward didn't they which i'd forgotten about completely so it was like sleep <laughs> awake you know you've just... had an all-nighter ah at my age good actually i really enjoyed it <laughs> now, I think I've had an all-nighter and all haven't you uh <laughs> No, I haven't, actually. Oh, I could have had. I've been in Belfast for the weekend. Oh, nice. Oh, oh my God, I loved it. It's good Belfast. Do you know what? The best pub in the whole world is in Belfast. Yeah. <laughs> it is, and it's called The Crown. And I have to say yeah. that thanks to a guy called Ronnie, cheers, Ronnie, we nearly missed our flight because he said, said, when's your flight? We said, oh, it's in an hour. He went, oh, you've got time for another one. It's only across the road, the airport. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we didn't have one, but it was fantastic. So... It would have been nice to have that extra hour because I could have had an extra hour in the pub then. Ah. So that's why I would have liked to have yeah. had it. But, you know, actually, I think they should keep it as it is now. I, I'm, I'm with all these people mm. who are saying don't change the clocks anymore. Mm. Keep them as they are. Stay oh, on GMT no. plus one. Mm. Really? And then next year, plus two. And then we'll be in line with Europe. And, you know, yeah. stop messing about. You know, I keep forget the heating doesn't come on. No, but they did that in the 70s. <laughs> No, they did that in the 70s when I was at school. I remember I was doing my A-levels and they tried that. Do you remember that? And it was awful because we were... It was dark at school till nearly the break and nobody wanted to work. I don't think it was really depressing and horrible. They moved it back the next year. I hate yeah, but it. but then it still gets dark earlier in the afternoon. No, but I don't see what the difference because is. Because you save public electricity. The public buildings don't have to be lit for as long, is what they said to us, but I didn't like it. <laughs> No. Well, you know what? It's passed me by this hour's difference. I've been in Norway for a month, so I've come back on the yeah, team. Oh, yeah, we're so pleased oh. to see you. Uh, do you know what? You wouldn't believe me. <laughs> I couldn't even show you the pictures. Okay. I've been crossing the Arctic Circle with, amongst others, Colleen's ex-husband. Oh! Uh oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, and, and Andrew Castle and Gavin Henson. It's a new show for ITV called 71 Degrees North, which will come out later this year, where we sent ten celebrities to fend for themselves, making their way to 71 Degrees North. So was it Arctic. dark? Was it dark in the... In no, dark well, no, it was, no their, their daytime hours are pretty mm. much like ours at the moment. In, in fact, they've got the midnight mm. sun coming soon, which I think would sound me a so bit it just crazy. Makes, yeah, it makes everybody so much happier. I'm far happier. I'm so pleased the clocks went, uh, went forward, although I'm knackered as well yeah. because I was singing at the Gay Pride Ball oh. and I had a brilliant time so I could have done with an extra hour with I was in the dressing room with butlers in the buff and it actually they're looking oh. at <laughs> but they had nothing on in the back so I was surrounded by bums oh. <laughs> Just terrible. How frustrating knowing that you're so not their type. <laughs> I know. Hey ho. What a waste. Okay, now also keeping busy this weekend was Tory leader David Cameron, who was giving a speech to his party faithful. However, it seems that the papers today are more interested in the casual attire he chose to wear for the occasion. Earlier this month, David admitted that his wife, Samantha, chooses all of his clothes, and some have said that in this case she's committed an uncharacteristic fashion faux pas by encouraging him to dress down for the occasion. So, should politicians always dress the part when on duty, ladies? What do you think? I think they should, because I think it's what we expect. I think a, a person has, how, who has a certain role should dress to that role. And uh, maybe it's just me being old-fashioned, but, you know, I like a man in a suit, and I just, you know what I hate? I hate politicians and people that dress in really, like, they think trendy clothes because they think it's cool, but we just don't or we never will see them as that. Mm. So I think it's, it's perhaps, you know, I mean, I wouldn't dress a man. I wouldn't, I, I, could, I couldn't be bothered. I, like a, I would like a man to know what he has to wear at a certain do or whatever. I mean, I just, I, I, I just couldn't be bothered, I don't think. But I, I, he looks all right, but it's just a bit uncool for me. Really? Can we get yeah. off his clothes? Sorry? Can really? we get off his clothes? And, you know, I cannot believe the amount of coverage this morning, the newspapers, yeah. devoted to what he was oh, wearing yeah. for the speech. 
I don't care. I want to be, I want to hear what he's saying. I want him to say something, mm. something that I want to hear. Mm. I don't care what he looks like. He could be walking around in Borat's swimsuit for all I care. I don't <laughs> care less. You know, all I'm doing is listening and I'm still not hearing anything I want to particularly hear. I think it's really naive, to be honest, of any politician to think that what they wear isn't going to have some kind of effect, yeah. isn't going to yeah. affect the public's perception of what they are saying. And yeah. frankly, if you look a mess, and I really thought he did, then the people are going to think what you're saying is, is rubbish. They're going to think what you're saying is a mess. Mm. And I think... But he was preaching to the converted, really. So, yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's just casual. But, you know, why no, is it important? Casual. It wasn't casual, it was a mess. <laughs> it wasn't a mess. It wasn't exactly a mess. It was just casual. He didn't have a suit on. Mm. So what? Well, you shouldn't be casual about important topics, about important issues. I absolutely agree with you. If only what he was saying had, had any import or any substance at all. Now, what about the idea that he's dressed by his wife, though? Because, oh, yeah. obviously, that is a task and a half. If you're taking responsibility for everyone in the house, not only the kids, but your men as well, are any of us guilty of that? Do we dress our men? Oh, I do. <laughs> do you? Oh, well, but he dresses me as well. Oh, to be I honest. say, in yeah. that time. No, no. Did he not put his own shoes on yet? No. Oh. <laughs> no, Doctor Peter and I, we have a lovely time. He, he, he likes nothing more than. <laughs> than dressing me up and I love dressing him up we go together and Do you want to just know, clear this up it's kind of daytime work you know it's, it's all yeah, kind of appropriate so. <laughs> oh my no no it is it's daytime work yeah but if we've got a, you know a big special thing to go to it's lovely you know well, you go out together and you. he chooses mine and Does I choose he? his yeah most men hate oh, sitting going shopping he sticks me in a little cubicle passes me things you look lovely in this love try this try wow. this he's so wow. encouraging oh he's wow. lovely and I'm lucky. has he got any brothers <laughs> he does actually but he's That's not as nice, good at the dressing he's nice actually I mean Mark loves shopping with me loves it just sits in the change room and watches me get undressed basically <laughs> <laughs> I, I think <laughs> it's wrong. Do you, I mean, telling him, you know, dressing your man, I don't think, I think it's just all wrong. Who's got time? And to be honest, I'd, I'd much rather undress him than dress him, oh. would you? But you have got, you've got a young man that you, you have to dress still, probably. Or does he dress himself already? Is he, what is he, eight, Jake? Jake, he's eight. No, um, he dresses himself now, so I don't have to do any of that. So I certainly wouldn't be doing it to a big boy, would I? No. <laughs> I don't have to do it to my little boy anymore. No, no. exactly. One would hope. But yes, um, good luck with trying to find one that you can dress that's a little bit bigger, though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll be asking.